All right, welcome back. Um, today is going to be a little bit of a longer episode because I'm going to go through how to set up your hangar for drones. If most of you are struggling, like I am, to remember which drone to drop in at which time, especially during Beacon Rush, um, I've just found a pretty straightforward common sense approach. Line up your drone with your bot or your bot with your drone. Uh, since I can't really figure out how to sort drones when you're in the drone, you can't really move this guy right here um, over anywhere without, you know, buying a new drone. So what I've decided to do is I just move my bots accordingly. So there's specific characteristics you have to remember uh, when you set up your drones and the skills according to the bot that you have. So um, Leech, for instance, uh, has damage resistance, but it's only for a short amount of time. Now it's about eight seconds or seven, or I don't know what they've reduced it to. Um, so for my Leech, I'm gonna focus on either uh, repairing or freezing people as uh, key drone characteristics. For the Scorpion, it's purely health. When you have a massive drop in health, you want your Scorpion to heal pretty rapidly. I have my Scorpion here uh, uh, paired up with an Adrian Chong pilot, so clearly he will need um, more health. He's not like the Iskra um, pilot that, that essentially heals once, once uh, she goes back. So uh, healing will be a key element here for this drone uh, that I'll have to put with the Scorp. Um, for the tankier bot, so a Fenrir or a Falcon, um, I put a couple of things. I put a defense a resistance, uh, in increase of DR, as well as increase of uh, self-healing. So uh, you also have to pair up, again, another thing to remember, your module. So I put an active repair module that would pair up well with the Fenrir here. Um, and for my Hawk, I simply just put down some skills focused on self-healing when you get out of uh, phase shift, which I only have one of those uh, drone skills. They're um, priceless. They're one of the best ones you can get because if you phase shift a lot, especially with a weak bot like the Hawk, you want something like that. And then increase of damage because you want your bot like Hawk to just slaughter everybody. Um, and then here for the Arden Blitz, I'm still tweaking. Um, the idea here is to actually, and I need to actually do this right now because I keep on forgetting to, um, I'm going to put an anti-control module on my beacon runner because everybody is now freezing everybody uh, with the drone skills. It's driving me absolutely nuts. So um, I've set up my active module to be anti-control, weapons to be corkers, and um, since corkers are pretty prolific uh, bullet firing things, the build will be pretty high. So I put down either freeze or, uh, or lockdown. I have to go and look, so I can't even remember. All right, so now let's go uh, in reverse order what I did for my drones. Um, okay, so this is the defender that I got, five million. Um, and I put actually my first one that you guys saw in the last video, my first um, T3, this is a T3, correct? Yeah, T3. Uh, skill a 12% additional damage if I'm locked down because I'm always locked down uh, whenever I beacon rush now um, and I have that paired with a uh, chipset whoops sorry a locker downer so I was right so when my blitz my beacon rusher goes towards a beacon I want to lock down people and the e-machine guns are great uh, guns to to have that effect since they built rapidly so that is for the that is a drone for specifically my blitz okay uh, if memory serves me correct, this is the drone that is, um, huh, I don't even remember which bot this is for, and this is why it gets confusing, and this is exactly why I've paired it. I hope, I hope Pixel lets, let's, let's I, this is the Hawk. All right, it goes Hawk. So for, um, my Hawk, uh, the Fly has been, uh, outfitted with actually some really cool skill sets. Um, I've got a health one, which will help him, uh, from Fave Shift, repairs a portion of his durability immediately. Um, I've got a pretty sick, um, type a slot here again type a is the one that gives special effects and so with a hawk from 500 meters will be able to increase oh uh, whoops i just increased the battery microchip yeah this isn't actually a cool one um and the reason i did that is because i wanted to increase um the damage so i have an inhibited intensifier which is a uh, five percent damage uh increase on top of the additional five percent that i have and then a unimpeded intensifier which is an additional 5%. So I have 10% of damage right there and a health thing when I land. So essentially I decided that the Hawk is gonna be my damage bot from a distance and I have it set up with Dragoon. So that's probably an okay build. For the Fenrir, like I was mentioning, I've got a health related one. So Thermic Intensifier, oops, sorry, 
uh, is 5% damage. Uh, and let me find the health one. See, I'm still getting... And this is my struggle, actually, with the drones. This is just kind of uh, uh, ratifying it. Um, the little icons are not very self-evident. I mean, the health one is probably the only one that I can remember. Um, but... The recurrent reconstructive repair, if more than 40,000 is repaired over five seconds, increases the efficiency of the received repair, and it's 10% repair durability. As a 10% cooldown time, it can be used time and time again after 10 seconds. And with the Fenrir, you're constantly getting beaten down, so that's why I did that. On top of that, I have it stacked with a impaired defender. So um, if I'm suppressed, I have an increased defense points, and I've got it paired with another uh, uh, defender here. Um, if my durability falls below 30%, increases the power of my defense system for 10 seconds uh last five seconds but it has uh it, it can recur so every time it drops it'll it'll turn back on so my fenrir literally will last uh a lifetime when it's when it's in battle um what i've done here with the fly and this fly is associated with um i'm forgetting the bot now i have no idea but uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll remember it. Oh, my scorpion, yes. Um, it's purely health, so I put uh, some serious health-related uh, uh, repairs on this. Uh, this one is uh, 40,000 over five seconds. It'll give 10%, and the reason I did that is um, scorpions lose their glass cannon so they lose health pretty fast and if, if you know 40,000 of 150 is a pretty big drop so you want to put something on a weak bot that has something like this a 10% uh, repairability I also put I stacked it again because I managed to get a fly that had the right amount of health um, another recurrent crashing repair so if the robot receives more than 100,000 damage within three seconds it's a 15 percent uh, repair effect so it's like a double stack for health in case i'm getting slaughtered um and then a suppressor because um yeah it'd be kind of it's kind of great if you've got a freeze weapons to also suppress while you're attacking somebody they won't uh, be able to attack you back so that i think is a pretty good drone setup uh for my uh scorp and um finally uh on the far left is my um, drone paired with the uh, Thudden um, Leech. And what I put a very simple build here, A, because this defender uh, was 5 million and I didn't want to spend more, and B, I figured I'd be kind of mean to apply freeze uh, to a bot with a Thudden. So you've got the freezer effect here with the type A. And again, this question has come up uh, from some folks in my clan as well. Um, this socket type enables the robot's weapons to apply uh, freeze. Um, it will, but if you have a type microchip, I can actually work with your drone or your robot weapons. So it's both. So um, it's, there's certain chips that probably work with both. Um, my understanding here, it will be like defense mitigator is a good one, adds defense mitigation effect to the drone's weapon. So you can have a drone with this chip firing it. And if you have enough A sockets, you can have your freezer also at the same time. Uh, and for my leech, I also paired it with a, um, a last stand uh, struggling intensifier. So uh, as long as last stand is active and my leech is about to die, I get a boost of 10%, which is kind of a cool skill to have. Um, that really kind of covers the strategy. It was kind of a long rambling uh, discussion, but essentially you have to kind of think deeply about what type of bots you're putting in in order to pair the drones. I do not agree with Pixonic about this being a uh, match process of essentially um, taking your bot, going into battle and then saying, oh, let me take a look at this drone and let me drop in this drone at this point in time. It doesn't work that way. I mean, I, you have to be extremely sharp uh, to be able to look at those little icons down there uh, next to Discus, Fly, and Defender in a split second and say, oh yeah, I want a health and I want increased damage and I want this and I want that. That's just not gonna happen. It doesn't happen for me. If you if you think faster than that in a split second, then um, God bless and that's awesome. So hopefully this helps kind of clarify any sort of confusion uh, you may have about how these work. And in my... Um, Volume 5, yes, the Dummies for Drones for Dummies series will continue. Um, I'm going to actually have some gameplay and show you the impact of these drones on gameplay. Um, I, I would say it has, it has been slightly impactful, but not at the level of what pilots were 
um, when they were first released. So I think Legendary Pilots and Regular Pilots, when they first came out, really changed gameplay. I think Titans completely changed the gameplay. It was like completely a uh, massive shift, paradigm shift. I would say drones were like a subtle shift, like a, in percentage scale, I'd say Titans were about 80% change. Pilots about, you know, 60 to 80% gameplay change. This I think is like in the 20% range. So um, don't leave the game. I know people are getting frustrated and leaving. Um, just kind of build up the microchips, sit back, relax, assess, um, and buy as many chips as you can that you see reasonable, especially that phase shift one that I showed um, that heals after you, you, you come out of phase shift. Um, because they can work really well and and frankly you just need to invest in a few of those because if you uh look at the folks that have actually bought t3 um, or t4 chips and i'll just go to mine as an example i had a 10 percent additional damage and inhibit intensifier at the t2 level when it came to the t3 level it's 12 percent. is it was it really worth the 1700 gold no it wasn't so um hope you enjoyed this video and uh stay tuned for more thanks